Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well. Um, I wish there were a way that you could invite people to come into this, but um, maybe one of these days. I have something I want to share with you. I have something I want to share with you. A few things I want to uh, say to you uh, before we get started. I'd love for you to go to my website at rcblakes.com. I'll say these things while a few people come in with us. Um, go to my website at rcblakes.com and sign up for my mailing list. I'm almost, I'm moving towards 20,000 on my mailing list, but that's not enough. That's not even 10% of my following on YouTube. I need you, I need you all on my mailing list. Second thing I want to say is that I'm going to uh, put a link in the description for those of you that might need counseling. I get a lot of email about counseling and there's, um, there's a sponsor that I've come into partnership with called BetterHelp that, that they are an online counseling agency and they can uh, do it over the phone. So I'm going to put a link in there and if you use the link it'll get you uh, I think 10% off of whatever the cost is and it's supposed to be very affordable for most people. Also, don't forget to sign up for my uh, Queenology Cyber Conference that's happening on July the 20, I think the 25th and the 26th, maybe the 24th, 25th, but it's cyber and uh, it's, the cost of it is $39. It's going to be two days, a Saturday and a Sunday, about three hours or more of content each day. I'm going to facilitate the whole thing. And since I can't go and, and uh, appear physically, we're doing it in a cyber fashion. So I'm inviting the world to be a part of this. And uh, I've not talked about it because I was, you know, hammering out the content. And uh, we're talking about all kinds of stuff. This is the next conversation. We're calling it Queenology 2.0, um, the training for reigning. I want you to go to rcblakes.com, look under live events, and I want you to register for uh, that cyber conference uh, now. Uh, you know, it's on, a, it's on a cyber platform, so it can only accommodate so many people. I don't know how many people that is um, yet, but, you know, when, when, that, when we've maxed out, we've maxed out. It's not like, um, you know... So I need you, I want you there, and I want people from all around the world there. That's why we put it at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, in the States, so that, you know, those over in the UK can access it at a decent hour. I think it'll be around 6 or 7 o'clock in the evening there. Uh, those over in Africa, um, uh, someone even out of Australia is registered. They're going to be up at some ridiculous hour in the morning, but they want to be a part of it. And I haven't talked about it a lot, but I want you to go and do that. Uh, this, you know, this is important to me. Uh, also, my book, Kingology, is available on Amazon. Um, very soon we'll be doing, I'm believing that we'll be doing a cyber conference for Kingology as well, for your sons, your nephews, your, your boyfriends, those that want to hear that message. But tonight, just briefly, um, this was something I'll tell you what motivated I'll tell you what motivated this session tonight hello 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 thank you all for coming in I apologize to those of you that get distracted when I speak to people but um, it's just my nature and I don't I don't really mean to um, you know distract you but it's really just my nature and I, I pray that you can accept me for who I am you know, I really do. I pray that you can accept me for who I am. But um, I was I had a, a, a call today and I, of course, won't mention any names, but it was from a beautiful, um, beautiful young sister, beautiful young lady that could be my daughter. In fact, she calls me her uncle. Um, and she was telling me she was talking to me and she was talking to me about a situation that she's going through with a narcissistic partner. And she's talking about the games that this individual, this guy 
is playing the, the psychological uh, gymnastics. And I was listening to her and I said, wow, I have to, I have to just kind of address this. And so this is not even um, developed as a lesson per se, but it just came out of the impact that that conversation had on me because I had never, um, when she said what she said to me relative to what he did to her, I had never, I had never thought of, never had, I, I never had an idea of ever running that kind of game. And I never thought it possible for a person to do such a thing. And it just, it took me back. You know, it really took me back. Um, the extent to which a person uh, may go to break you. Is my signal good? Is my signal good? Before I continue, I don't want to continue. My signal is bad. Somebody talk to me. Is my signal good? Yes, yes it is, yes it is. Thank you. The extent to which a person may go to break you is just, is blowing my mind. I mean, back in the day when I was um, the guy that I always tell you, you, you about, you know, the guy that I was, I mean, I lied and I, I, you know, but to hear what I heard today and keeping confidence, but giving you an idea of what this was. Okay, I'll save, I'll save this for you until when I get to a certain point. But if you look in, I want to talk about a particular demonic strategy that narcissists use on a person. Uh, I call it the blame game. I call it the blame game. Um, and it's where a narcissist makes you responsible for the mess they created. And they are so prolific at blaming, which, you know, I've always said that this narcissist thing is demonic. I've always said that. And, and many of my, um, mental health expert friends, you know, they conclude I must be on to something because they really haven't found an answer as to what this really is. You know, they say, well, it's created in parenting and I can see that, you know, either child was deprived and had to focus on him or herself as a child because the parent wasn't there to nurture them and to protect them. And so this evolved into some warped personality or the child was overly um, loved and, and made to feel like everything just centered around him or her and, and grew up. And I get all of that. But at the end of the day, it's demonic. You know, it's just not natural. It's not natural for a person to possess the characteristics of a narcissist, a malignant narcissist, um, it's just, I just don't think it's in the human DNA to go to that extent, you know, without feeling anything. I think to some extent this has to be demonic. And again, I'm no, I'm no mental health expert. I'm no counselor. I'm no therapist. That's why I refer you to people. I'm, I'm a pastor. I'm a man. And I'm just observing life and I'm learning and I'm, I'm sharing with you as I go. So I'm learning something and I'm sharing it with you. This is raw. Because I just had this conversation today and it took me back. Now, I'll, I'll tell you what it was in a minute. But if you look in John chapter, well, let me give you the first point. Here's the first point relative to this blame game strategy. The narcissist will reverse a situation and accuse you of the wrongdoing, when they clearly did all of the wrongdoing, they will reverse it and accuse you of the wrongdoing and they are so good at it that they make you doubt your own um, innocence. And some of you have been there where you had, when you, you've been in this relationship where you under this spell 
and this individual, this woman or this man uh, turned this thing around on you. And before you knew it, you were grasping for straws because you were beginning to doubt yourself. They, they reverse a situation. Thank you, Coach Rod. Please, Pastor Blake's the coolest pastor online. I look up to you and learn from you. Keep up the Lord's work. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I love being called a cool pastor. But they reverse it. Okay, now let me give you the story. This particular dear heart in a situationship with a man. And no names, no part of the country, none of this. The man comes back and he contracts something, STD. And he says to her, well, um, you know, if, if, if this is what I think it is, we over. And, uh, and so she's like, well, what, what do you mean if this is? Because I can't believe you did this to me. Sherlanda, thank you so much. Now, this poor heart, this poor dear heart, no, she has not gone out on this man sexually. And he has clearly done some things that he shouldn't have done. And she said he hid her from her blind side because he's talking to her like He's actually serious that somehow she did this to him. When the reality was he knew that he had stepped out on her and it caught up with him. But rather than having to explain how he stepped out on her, he reversed the situation and immediately accused her. And she was describing to me how. This thing threw her into uh, an emotional crisis where, you know, you just you doing what you're supposed to do in a relationship. And then somebody comes up and it says, well, you know, I, I think I'm, I may, may have something. And I can't believe you did this to me. And you're like, I did what to you? I can't believe you stepped out on me and I can't believe you brought this back to me. Oh, my goodness. It is demonic. So they reverse a situation to accuse you. And see, some of you are dealing with that right now. Some of you are dealing with that right now. You have somebody in your life that has done nothing but dirt. And they have a, a, an art. There's an art. They have a gift of twisting that thing around, reversing that thing and accusing you. And they're so good at it that you almost, you, you almost begin to scratch your head. This poor, poor child said, she started wondering, what, 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 what happened? Did something happened and I didn't know it? You know, just all over the place. It's demonic. And the Bible says in Revelation 12 and 10, it says, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser talking about Lucifer, Satan, for the accuser of our brother and his cast down, which accused him before our God day and night. One of the main characteristics of the demonic is accusation. And one of the ways the narcissist ties your mind up, Aif Hayari, I think I pronounced it right. Thank you. One of the ways the narcissist ties your mind up to your joy, thank you so much, I'm grateful for you, is they bring, they bring to bear vehement accusation as they accuse you as though they have evidence and they accuse you with a certain emotion behind it that you believe it. You begin to believe. You begin to question yourself. You know, did I do something I didn't know? My, this poor baby said she, she didn't know what was going on. It, it just seemed like it was so serious, you know. But we see that the spirit of accusation is a part of, is at the center 
of the demonic. Now, let me show you another situation in the Bible. In John chapter 8, verses 3 through 9, it says, And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman is, was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what says you? What do you say about it, Jesus? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground and they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. But here's the thing I want you to see. They say that she was caught in adultery, taken in adultery in the very act, meaning they caught her having sex with a man. But yet the woman is the only one there being accused. The man has disappeared. They caught in the act. Both of them are breaking the law. But the woman is the only one that's being accused. That is indirectly a visual of how a how narcissistic abuse functions. While the narcissist hides, the narcissist takes his or her victim and puts them on stage and puts them and their faults failures under spotlight while the narcissist hides. Micah, God bless you. You have changed my life. I listen to you every day. The knowledge you share has truly been a blessing. Much love, Pastor. Thank you so much. That again means the world to me. So they, they reverse the situation to accuse you. That's how that blame game starts. They know they're wrong, but they'll accuse you. Um, you know, they hit you upside your head and then you hit them back. I can't believe I'm calling the police. I can't believe I can't believe you put your hands on me. But, but wait a minute. I'm, I'm defending myself. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe you did that. And, and, and they are so emotional. They are so adamant that they make you step outside of your own sanity the realm of reality, and they make you question yourself. Did I, did I hit first? Did I? Number two, watch this. After they accuse you and they, they, they drum up all of this, this stuff, they create all of this drama around this situation, the next thing, the next move they'll make is they will ghost you. They'll, they'll reverse the situation to accuse you or they blame you. And they'll make this big old thing out of it, like you were wrong, you're questioning yourself. Cherry, Cherry Ball, Cherry Boo, 65, thank you. My ex-husband, a diagnosed narcissist, turned almost all of my friends against me with things he didn't, things he did, but I did them, uh, but, I, but said I did them. Even his female psychiatrist banned him from her office. Wow, that's serious right there. Thank you so much. So number two, they'll ghost you after they accuse you. So they'll accuse you. Letter A. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Blakes. I came upon your page after searching for help uh, and a word from God. You have helped me. I'm recovering from narcissistic abuse, was in an abusive, toxic relationship. Thank you. I'm so glad that uh, something was said that helped you. But secondly, they ghost you after the accusation. See, what they do in the accusation part is they elevate this thing. They create such a dramatic scene and they create such emotion in you um, that, you know, your your heart is racing. You're trying to figure out what's really going on. Uh, you know, is there a misunderstanding? And then once they get you to that place where they know they've gotten you emotional, 
then they will drop off of the scene. You won't be able to contact them. You won't, they won't answer your calls. You won't be able, they won't respond to DMs. They won't, you know, they'll just go, they may block you on social media. Like they are actually offended by what you did. When you really didn't do anything, but now this ghosting on top of the accusation. Uh, Cherry Boo, you back again. I apologize. I was so upset. I typed in psychiatrist wrong. Girl, nobody noticed that. Ain't nobody noticed that. Thank you again. Um, they bring you up to a place emotionally where they're accusing you. And then once they got you there, then they pull away from you. And what is the purpose of that? That is to allow you to marinate in the confusion. That is to allow you to map and see some of you are right there now where this person has accused you of things that are so far beneath your character. You can't believe that they even imagine you to be this kind of person. And so you're caught up in the disbelief. And so now your biggest thing in your mind, you're not thinking about this is a narcissist. You're thinking about. I got to make this right. And then they disappear. They ghost you. Iron Mike, my stepfather is everything you've described thus far. I just gave up uh, on that situation and distanced myself. Now I have a peace that I've never known before. And sometimes that's necessary to be able to know when to walk away from a situation. You cannot save every situation. Some people, you got to love them on their level. And sometimes that means at a far, far distance. But now let's look at this, this number two. They ghost you after the accusation. You see, the abandonment, when they ghost you after accusing you of things that are just un horrific, the abandonment, now listen to this statement very carefully. The abandonment is to make you believe that they must really be hurt. And I must have done something. And the curse in that situation is wanting desperately to prove your innocence. That's, that's the curse. You want desperately to prove your innocence. They already know you're innocent. It's, this is all a concoction. And so they, they, they accuse you, they create this dramatic situation, then they ghost you, leaving you at that place where you need the closure of being able to communicate your truth, but they won't give it to you. They won't give you the opportunity to address the issue. They don't want you to address the issue. They want you to marinate in the confusion. They want these lies to soak through your soul because what happens while you while you while they're while they have pulled away from you and they're now ghosting you and they've abandoned you in this situation what's what's being reinforced in your in your mind in your soul in your subconscious maybe even in your conscious mind you're devaluing yourself because now you're questioning yourself that's a devaluation for you to question yourself if you know that you've been faithful to a person and they put you in a position where they say to you like they really believe it. You went out on me and you brought something home to me. Um, and now they have ghosted you. And so now you left there with these thoughts in your mind. It's, it's like it's intended to drive you nuts. Veretta, thank you. Your teachings always be right on time. A hard battle to fight when you have kids with the enemy. But I'm uh, taking what I'm learning from you to work through this fight. Check out this video I have on here about co-parenting with a narcissist. I might, might get some value out of it. But while they're ghosting you, you're devaluing yourself. It's also intended to make you squirm. They, they want you to squirm. They want, they want to consume your conscious mind 24-7. That's the purpose of ghosting you. It's not that they're through with you. It's that they want to just break you some more. 
and they want you they want your opinion of yourself to be shrunken if that's the right way to say it the weaver talks thank you so much they want your opinion to be diminished and they want you to squirm they want to be at the front of your mind they want to make you emotionally and psychologically sick thinking about them and in some sick way trying to figure out how you're going to uh, redeem yourself with them. Isn't that interesting? They did everything to you, but they want to leave you in a position where you're trying to figure out how am I, how am I going to redeem myself? How am I going to reconcile? And then what happens is while they're ghosting you, they will, they will share, they won't, they won't communicate with you. But what they will do is they will share their version, that lie that they sold to you. They will share that with your mutual community, your friends, family, people in your circle. They'll begin to share with them. You know, I can't believe it. I'm embarrassed to tell you this, but yeah. So and so went out on me and brought this back to me. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And 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 and, and that is they they want to discredit you. And they also watch this. While they won't talk to you, they want to put this lie in the mouths of other people who unknowingly are being used by them as puppets to deepen your wound. Because every time somebody comes to you that you have respect for and they say to you, well, so-and-so told me, I, you know, no, it ain't my business, but so-and-so told me that, what's up with that? Now, now you're having to constantly defend your, your dignity and your character. And the person that is causing this mess, thank you, Aaron, is, is nowhere to be found. Uh, Janine, thank you, Pastor. God bless you and yours. I appreciate you, Janine. Thank you so much. Nowhere to be found. And that's intentional. And so what is this doing? This is wrecking you emotionally. This is, this is intended to wreck you emotionally. That's the purpose of it. Some of y'all are there now. You've been calling all day, calling all week. They won't answer. They won't answer. They, they got off the phone, hung the phone up on you like they were angry with you about something you can't even understand. You don't even, you don't even know what you did. They're accusing you of something and now you can't catch them. And then a few days later, you start discovering your siblings telling you about so-and-so called and told me you, your friends said so-and-so told me that you did, you, you did that. And you, you're trying to defend yourself. Thank you, Jacqueline. You're trying to defend yourself, but the person you need to talk to is intentionally avoiding you. That's, that's not a mistake. They're not angry. They're calculating. They are manipulating. Ms. J. Triplet, I think I said it right. Thank you so much. Watch this. And then it brings me to number three. They'll accuse you of something that is so far beneath you that it's unbelievable. Number two, they will then drop off of the scene for a week, two weeks, a month. And then number three, watch this. And some of y'all have been here. They pop back up. They pop back up. What is going on when a person accuses you of something that is so low, so horrific, they drop out of your life like they want nothing else to do with you. And then all of a sudden, usually around the time when you kind of getting adjusted to things and you accepting things for what they are, they pop back up. What's going on? Why do they pop back up? If I did what you said I did, why didn't you stay gone? Why, why did they, why, why did they, why does it, why do they pop back up? Okay, I'll tell you what I think about it. I'm no therapist. I'm no counselor. 
Look in my description. You can find better help. Real therapists, real counselors. Number three, they return to cement the trauma. You see, when they accused you, they put a knife in. God's anointed. Thank you, Bishop. You're helping me recover from a demonic soul tie. Literally, it is uh, hard, but God is keeping me and you're helping me. Continued blessings and favor to you and First Lady Lisa. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I'm, I'm so glad that God has delivered you from that. You're going to be all right. When they accuse you, they put the knife in. Freedom. Freedom rings. Thank you so much. 28 by 20. Hi, can you talk about narcissist mother, please? One of these days I will, because it's a reality. I will talk about it, in fact. Thank you for asking. When they accuse you, they put the knife in. When they, um, when they ghosted you, watch this, they left you there to bleed out. But when they return, they come to twist that knife in deeper. When a narcissist comes back, my God, never number two. Thank you so much. When you blast the truth, the anger gets unreal. I'm two and a half years out, 2.5 years out. Thank you for teaching us how to combat the human demons growing. They are growing and they are very real. When they return, they come to Twist that knife in deeper. Now watch this. Stay with me. They return to cement the trauma. See, all the other stuff was just a setup. Now they come in to give you the knockout blow. When they come back, it ain't no time to be celebrating. Because they're not coming. They're coming back to give you even a worse pain than they created when they left. It's the only reason they come back. Listen to what, listen to what. Um, when a narcissist comes back, okay. Here's something the dear heart brought up today, which, which, watch this, watch this. This is going to help some of you. And I told her that I would use this. Uh, and, and she said it was fine. I would not use her identity, of course. She said, when this, when this dude came back, okay, he did all of that. He accused her of something, doing something to him when he actually did something to her. He dropped off the scene and ghosted her. And then weeks later, he returns. Watch this. Look what he comes back. Look what he, look what he comes back saying, though. OK, listen to this. Now, this is going to help somebody. He comes back saying, I can't believe you did that to me. Um, watch this. Why don't you apologize to me and we can move on from this? I said, wait, he, he asked you to apologize to him when he l told you a lie and tried to make you believe that you did to him what he actually did to you. And he comes back after weeks of ghosting you and he says, apologize to me so that we can move on from this. She said, yes, sir. And I thought about it. The purpose of this dude asking for an apology See, and, and some of you have been there where somebody did you wrong and then come back into your life and they got, the, you know, and say, apologize to me for what you did. The purpose of the apology is to make you identify with a diminished self view. See, if she had apologized, it would have meant that psychologically, subconsciously, she had bought into the lie that he said that he tried to make her believe that she was a cheater. So when he comes back and he says, apologize, he's trying to he's trying to make you cement in your mind that you are the lie he told. She refused to do that. 
And see, the thing about a narcissist, in most cases, they're going to come back. Again, I tell you, this thing is demonic. If you look in the Bible, Matthew 12, 43 through 45 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house to my demon spirits. I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it, findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Anto, thanks, Pastor, for educating us queens. I appreciate you. Thank you. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So a demon spirit will leave out, wander for a while, then come back to check on the house. If it's empty, You'll go back and get seven more demons and come back. And the second round of bondage will be worse than the first. There's some of y'all that these people have ghosted you. And you sitting there trying to run them down. When the reality is you need to be changing your phone number. You need they, they're blocking you, but you need to be blocking them. And you need to find yourself in somebody's counseling you need to find yourself in some kind of situation where you begin to preoccupy your soul with something healthy so that when they try to come back, there won't be space for them. There won't be space for them. And so now when they get back, when, when the narcissist decides that he or she is going to come back, um, if you are unaware, pretty puppy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Watch this. If you're unaware, you will submit and your soul will be recalibrated. If you, if, in other words, if you're not woke and the narcissist comes back and starts saying stupid stuff like, you know, apologize to me. Just apologize. We can move forward. And you apologizing for something that, that you did not do. You, your, your soul is being recalibrated in that, in that moment. If you are aware of what's happening, the, the greatest challenge you will have, if, if you're like the dear heart I talked to today and you're aware and you're like, I'm not, you know, I'm not apologizing to you for something like, no, no, thank you. The greatest challenge you will have uh, to overcome will be uh, that you will struggle with reconciling what they said you did with what you know is true. In other words, you're going to be you're going to have a struggle with uh, desiring closure. Missy Adams, Pastor Blake's God has sent you for such a time as this. I must have my husband uh, as a client. My Lord, laugh out loud. <laughs> laugh out loud. <laughs> Thank you so much. Your challenge is going to be to reconcile what you know is true with the lie they told. And watch this. You're going to have this grand desire for closure. You're going to want them to acknowledge that what they said about you was not true. And you're going to you're going to struggle. Watch this. You're going to struggle with. Fighting to explain yourself and you're going to want them to give you attention enough for you to explain yourself and they never will. Slim. Thank you, Pastor Blake. Your videos are helping me get through uh, breaking away from a demonic covert narcissist who only just wanted to destroy me. Thank you so much. I'll be praying for you. But that's going to be your struggle. You're going to want them to listen to you because you, you, you're, going to, you're going to think that you're dealing with a normal person and I can explain to you this was a misunderstanding. It was never a misunderstanding. This person knew exactly what they were doing and they created the exact trauma in you they wanted to create. And so when they return, you're going to be wanting to kind of like take advantage of explaining it. Little country, all of this is confirmation. And I understand why I am single. It's something about the name of Jesus that makes them uncomfortable. And no doubt about that. And so you're going to have to just you're going to have to be good with 
when they try to come back, not giving them access at all. Or if, you know, if you do, which I don't advise, um, cutting it short, 629. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Blakes, for being a vessel unto our Lord and Savior. Send my love to the First Lady Lisa. I will do that. You're going to have to be cool with, you know, hopefully just giving them no access at all. And if you do, uh, Jamie, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. And if you do, um, you got to be prepared to ask them, are you losing your mind? And I would I would leave the converse, I would leave the situation with something like this. You know what happened and hang the phone up. Always leave them confused. You know what happened. Bam. Now, you may have to go talk to your therapist after that, but go talk to your therapist. Don't sit there and let nobody play with your mind. Real talk with Kizzy Rock. I have witnessed countless times how you appreciate one dollar like it is one hundred. We thank you. I appreciate you. That means the world to me. And I do. And sometimes people get upset with me uh, because they don't like me stopping. But, you know, how can somebody be kind to me, be it a hundred or be it a dollar? How can somebody be kind to me when they don't have to be? And I not appreciate that. I have to. I have to. So I thank you for I thank you for acknowledging that, because sometimes I feel bad because I can't please everybody. You know, I, I accept me for who I am, because if I'm not real, I, I can't I can't, you know, but thank you is the world to me. That means the world to me. So listen, I'm gonna let you all go because I've been on here with you 42 minutes. And um, I just I just thought that was. I, that that took me back when, when when she told me that this dude said that and tried to run that kind of game. It took me back and I said to her then, I said, I'm going to have to talk. I'm going to have to teach this. I'm going to talk about this. And I knew then that I was going to talk to you all tonight about this because it was amazing. The blame game is, is, is ruthless. And some of you all are dealing with it now. And I hope that you glean something from this. I hope that you glean something from this. Yeah. Now, um, let me pray for you. Father God, I speak supernatural covering over every one of these and those that will watch the replay of this supernatural covering. God, they're demonic forces. We know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. They're demonic forces that are established against the well-being of your people. Now, Father, I thank you for covering them, every one of them, in the name of Jesus. Every weapon the enemy has raised up against them, I declare and decree now, it will not prosper. It will not prosper. It will not prosper. In Jesus' name, I thank you for the peace of God resting upon them. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. I love you all. Listen, don't forget to go by my website right now, rcblakes.com, and sign up for my mailing list. Also, while you're there, go over to live events. I need you all to register. Thank you, Tyra. You are my inspiration. You help a lot. He'll, he'll be back and the sore will not open. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm missing it. Seven years past the seven years. Of completion. I know that's right. In Jesus' name. Uh, Tashana, that you just told my whole story. In, in Jamaica, you would, let me see some. you would say this situation, lick me fee six. I don't know how to say that. <laughs> I love that though. I'm going to learn how to talk me some Pat in a minute. Uh, let me see. Uh, Trinika. It's been the hardest fight of my life, 20 years, and I'm okay, only 39. No access is the sure way that they don't suck you in. We share children, keep me in prayer, loving the healing journey. Bless you for helping us. Thank you, Trinika. Let me see, A. Ferguson, thank you for, for your teaching. Both you and Lisa uh, are like spiritual parents. That means the world to us. That means the world to us. 
Now, as I was saying, I want you all to go to rcblakes.com, go to live events. I want you in my Queenology Cyber. You know, my schedule was disrupted by COVID-19. I was supposed to be going international with the message. So we're taking it cyber. It's just $39 for both days. That's all. I ain't, you ain't got to get no airplane. You ain't got no hotel. You can sit in your house. $39 registration. And that's going to be amazing. And it's Queenology 2.0. The training for reigning. And as I'm developing this, the Holy Spirit is pulling the actual book. This will be the third book. This will be what I call the trilogy. Father Daughter Talk was the beginning. Queenology was the second. Queenology 2.0 will be the third installment in that series. And so uh, we're taking the message to the next level. So this is new content. This is not what you this is not what you see in the Queenology book. This is the training for reigning. After you're conscious, now you got to know how to reign. That's what we're talking about. Diplomacy. You know, uh, five people a queen needs in her life. You know, that's the kind of that's the kind of stuff. So I want you to go and register. And uh, again, all of that will be in the description. Those of you that are in need of counseling for real in the, in the description, I'll have a link. So I love y'all. I want you to have a great night and uh, share this on your Facebook platforms. If you have such, uh, just share the links for me. I want people to hear this message. Blew me away. Blew me away. I love you. I'll t what am I missing? I know I'm missing something. I'll talk to you all soon. God bless you now. Have a great night.